Hello, everybody. Hello. Happy Biodiversity Week. Hello, everybody. Happy Biodiversity Week. We are so excited to be here with you guys today. Today, it is Saturday, September 12th. This is our biodiversity update for September 12th, getting towards the close of our Biodiversity Week, which will officially end tomorrow. My name is Kyle. I am your park team captain for Prairie Creek Redwood State Park. And I am Erica, and I am your team captain for Humboldt Redwood State Park. And um, although our competition is officially ending tomorrow, you may notice that we're in a little bit different of a format today. We are joining you from Zoom. We've got our really sweet virtual backgrounds going on behind us. And we're actually joining you from inside of our homes rather than in the parks today. And that is because of the California wildfires. Um, the air quality in our area is um, pretty bad. So we are not going outside. We're not encouraging people to continue making observations in our park. Although if you have made observations or taken pictures within the past couple of days, you can still upload those. So although our competition has not officially ended, there are still some things um, coming in. I think we can officially say that Prairie Creek has okay. lost. Yes. Oh, well, we there's still tomorrow. There's a miracle, Kyle. You know, we can always hope for a miracle. Um, but yeah, unofficially, this is, as Kyle said, kind of the ending of this competition. It did have to end on not so good of means, but, you know, just how nature is adaptable and, you know, you just got to keep going. We're kind of doing the same thing here and trying to fill in that gap. We're not outside, but we do have some really cool backgrounds. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. These are some really and cool um, we will be updating you as per our usual and talking a little bit about how all of the competition shook out. Um, really quick on fire stuff. If you do want to talk more about that, Erica and I did make a video a little bit earlier today. It came out at one o'clock. So if you want to hear a little bit more about just kind of the current fire conditions, check out some resources and some ways that, um, you know, just to wrap your head around all of this stuff going on, check out that video. We've got tons of resources attached to it for you to learn more. But this is your update for our Redwood Bio Blitz competition between Prairie Creek Redwood State Park and Humboldt Redwood State Park. We're going to um, start off with just an overview between the two, how everything kind of shook out in these last couple of hours. We still do have observations trickling in. Um, so even tomorrow, we're going to have a little bit different, but Humboldt Redwoods, again, is in such a vast lead, um, kind of as they have been, that I don't think that as far as observations, at least, <laughs> that Prairie Creek is going to catch up without people really being able to be in the park. Um, we are close in species, though, so that being said, if you have pictures, if you have things to upload, put them in there. You can still do it from yeah, home. Yeah, super not. close, and it's, it's, it's actually very possible at Prairie Creek. So you don't know, maybe tomorrow Griff will give some good news on that category. You never know. Um, so there will be a closeout event tomorrow. Be sure to check that out. But for now, we're going to give you your update. We'll talk about an overview between the two parks. We'll break it down park by park like we have been doing. And then we have not one, not two, but three creature features for you today. Um, because there are so many great observations in the field. We just want to give a big shout out to everybody who's doing some great stuff. Awesome. All right. So one of the advantages of us doing it this way today, although we are not live, you are going to be able to see um, the project pages. So you'll actually be able to see all the numbers that we're talking about if you haven't had the opportunity to check out the project pages on the iNaturalist website. This is where we're pulling all of our information from, and it looks really pretty. So let's talk about it. So this is our overview project here. This is comparing between the two parks. And you can see that um, our numbers as of now Humboldt Redwoods has 757 total observations as compared to Prairie Creek, which has 453. Great job, Erica. Pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah, I had to do a touchdown dance, like a victory dance. <laughs> um, but not to fear, we will be doing things like this um, in the future. It, it's really encouraging to see how many of you participated and just talking to people in the park seemed really engaged with this. So I have no doubt that we are going to keep doing BioBlitz and, and kind of these competition format was tons of fun. And hopefully the world will not conspire against us so much. So here is um, just a cool map to see where all the observations took place. This looks big and chunky from this far out, but you can zoom in. And of course, it will show you all kinds of great, um, that was the wrong kind of zoom. It can show you all kinds of great spots as to where these individual things were actually seen. And notice how humble Redwood State Park is just bigger and better than Prairie Creek State Park. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know about that. <laughs> you know, we've got the ocean. You guys are all stuck. I know. 
Look at that. I love Prairie Creek, actually. I can't even lie. Both parks. I really hope that once this is all over, you guys that haven't been to these parks can just go and check them out because they're so beautiful. They are pretty incredible. Um, so one of the really interesting things about this competition is the species, right? That's our, our biggest measurement of biodiversity is the amount of species. Um, and this is still increasing. I believe when I pulled this up, it was 379 or something like that. And it's boosted up to 401 just, just today since people are adding their observations. Yeah. And so I just want to give a you know big shout out to our top observed organisms. Of course, our Coast Redwood, tons of observations coming in. 26 individual observations. Tons of people are seeing this species. And that's awesome and to be expected. These trees are magnificent. They're epic, tallest trees in the world. Um, and it's breathtaking. If you've never seen them um, under other conditions, please come visit. Yeah, we even got an albino one in there too. That was cool. Um, and then we have tan oak coming in as number two, uh, just a type of tree that's fairly popular. I actually didn't realize how many tan oaks were in the park until starting this project. And I just started to see them everywhere. I had, knew what they were, but I hadn't really kept an eye out for them. So seeing the 22 observations kind of got me looking for them. And I noticed that they're everywhere, especially down in Humboldt Redwoods. There's a, there's a lot of tan oak. Yeah, and we got lots. We have our, our two types of berries kind of tying for third, the evergreen huckleberry and the thimbleberry, both really common types of berries that grow in the park. And both are edible Yum. and delicious. All right. You want to tell us a little bit more about our um, let's talk about identifiers. What, we haven't really talked about these people in our, in our things before. So what do they do? Yes. Um, so identifiers uh, actually are people that have maybe were observers themselves, but are just people that are helping to be the, that second person or corroboration to observations that already been uploaded. So these people have actually gone through the project site and then just seen what people have been posted. Some of these already are research grade and you can tell by, um, it actually will have like a little green little tab on it and it says RG. So if it says RG, you know that that particular observation or that species um, observed has been research grade. So that means that uh, three people have agreed and they agree that that's what it is. That's what it looks like. And we really need that because that actually makes it so these are used for the Academy of Sciences. They need to be research grade in order to be actually used. So because anyone could just be like, oh, this is this, this is that. But by having multiple people just understand and be like, yep, that's exactly what I see. And I, I, I see you. Um, I think that that helps a lot. So we actually have had 139 identifiers which is awesome because if you think about the number of observers we've had, which is 39, that's over a hundred people that may have not actually been out there, but actually have helped. And I think with the conditions that we have, Kyle, you can, uh, I agree with me that some of the, uh, you know, some of the places or, you know, like the, yeah, maybe you'd want to go aren't really accessible now right now because of the smoke or just dangerous for some people to go out there. Um, and make these observations, especially yesterday in the last couple of days, especially at Humboldt Redwood State Park. Um, so the way that these people are getting involved, I think is commendable. I take my hats off to you guys, because that's over a hundred people. Like, thank you for getting involved in the project in whatever way that you saw fit and whatever way you were able to. And we want to make sure that we give you guys all a shout out. Uh, because, you know, it's all about accessibility and we understand that everyone can be out there right now. So thank you all that actually got involved in our project. Yeah, this is a great way to be involved from other places as well as now that we can't really go back out into the parks due to the current air quality. Mm -hmm. um, there are still a number of unknown identifications, pictures that haven't been figured out exactly what they are yet. So this is some way that we can still continue to um, kind of, this project's still going to be developing is even though we can't be in the field, we can continue to kind of refine these identifications and make them into research grade. Yep, definitely. All righty, let's see. Wow, some people have, yeah, we'll talk about some of these people. I'm just, I'm just fathoming and trying to see like all of these great observations that we've had. As you guys can see, it's all ranked. So there, if uh, there's like a couple of pages, I'm sure of this that you can go through, but we're just going to show you the top of the list right now. But at the very top, we have 
bear tracker with 357 observations and 106 species. Wow. And if you guys don't actually know, bear tracker is Kim Cabrera. She is a very renowned uh, tracker, bear tracker. Some of you guys might know her. I, I know Mary, one of our interpreter, loves using some of her resource resources because she is like super great, has a lot of info out there. Um, so yeah, thank you, Kim, for coming out there and helping us kill it. Thank you, Kim. Okay, and we have Griff with 137 observations and 103. Wow, that, that's great. That's really awesome. And if those of you don't know, that's John Griff, our very own Griff. <laughs> uh, then for third place, we have KM Slauson with 95 observations and 72 species. Man, these people are killing it. Then Shanna with Shanna Archibald with 64 observations and 49 species. And uh, then our very own Kyle. Oh, Kyle, could that really be you? With 62 observations and 47 species. And then Parker HSU with 61 observations and 42 species. And Braid 1. Braid, you're awesome. Breda is always on our Facebook Lives too. Braid, you're cool. Thank you for being part of this competition as well with 52 observations and 41 species. Sydney95521, are you from Mercator or what? Um, with 50 observations and 44 species. And Sullivan Ribbit with 44 observations and 15 species. Oh my God, I'm gonna do the last one just cause we're gonna do the top 10. Okay. Katrina Henderson with 40 observations and 37 species. Sweet. Wow, I really just wanna say that all of you guys got involved and it wasn't just like a couple, you guys really did a bunch. So good job. I know you were out there for a while and under these conditions, it's not easy, super happy. And we're gonna finish with, uh, we're gonna go back to that number nine, which was Sullivan Rabbit. What do we have for him? Or hey, we're not sure. We're gonna, we're gonna talk more about him. We'll, we'll get to that, yes. Oh, okay, well, that's right. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, Kyle. Okay. I'm just so excited. Me too. Did you wanna talk about the stats at all? Oh, sorry, I'm doing the stats. So the observations in total, and this is for both parks, is 1,210. That is a lot for, I think we had this competition for like a week. Thank you guys, that's so awesome. And as you can see, there's still some that need to be ID'd. So if you guys can go up there and help, you can kind of see in this pie chart, um, the percentage that we really, we still need to get ID'd. So go out there, you can still help ID those species. You can do it from your home. And then we have species at 401. Wow, that's awesome. So species is a kind of a different category. And if we didn't already talk about that a little bit, species is important because it actually helps us find the biodiversity that we have in our parks because it's the different kinds of species that we have. There are observations of a coast redwood that we had like 20 plus. So that could be multiple, but species, it's actually focusing more on the, the bio richness that we have, which is kind of, the point of our competition, which was the bio blitz. We really want to see the different kinds of various species that we have. So that is really important. Um, 401 reptiles, we had reptiles, amphibians, arachnids, insects. It's really awesome. You can kind of see by breakdown the different kinds of animals uh, that we had. And so some people are really into different kinds of things to look at. And so we really are happy to see those people that are going out there and getting the really hard to catch like insects and like those critters that, you know, maybe take a, some of our newer observers some time to understand. I really appreciate that because some of those are really hard, especially the little ones. Like those insects are so hard to get pictures of. So good job, everybody. And then identif identif identifications in total. We talked a little bit about this, but these are just um, just that kind of like thumbs up or you just agree with something. We actually had over a thousand, over 2000 ident identifications, which is almost double the amount of observations we had. And by the number of uh, identifiers that we had, which were like over a hundred more than we had, we can see how this number makes sense, how we had a lot more ident identifications with people. So, 
thank you everybody that actually helped support this project. I feel like we just, we got so much love and support here and these, we got the numbers to prove it. It's awesome, you guys. And we really appreciate all of your engagement and participation with this. It's been a blast for us. I hope that it's been at least half as fun for you. <laughs> Let's talk about Prairie Creek overall. This was, uh, it's, it's really just spectacular to see um, all of this stuff coming in. So let's talk about our kind of our, our big things here. Um, our top observer for Prairie Creek is KM Slauson with 95 observations and 72 species. Huge, big, spectacular, tons of things. And, um, you know, you can go into these projects and see all of the individual species that people have seen. And there is so many spectacular observations. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those with the creature features, but spending some time here, your time will not be wasted. It's really cool to see some of the things that have been seen here. Our top and most observed species is redwood sorrel um, in, and tan oak, tying for first, both incredibly abundant in Prairie Creek. Um, and we see a lot of it. Redwood sorrel is kind of those clover looking things that glow, grow all over the side of trails, um, totally abundant. And then our second thing we had, what, that's four different things tied with creeping buttercup, evergreen huckleberry, western maiden hair fern, and Sitka spruce. Ooh. Awesome. And then tied for third, we had even more things. Salal, thimbleberry, red alder, American trail plant, uh, cascara, the diamond spot tail, coastal monkey flower. Wow. Tons of different organisms, lots of observations on each of these. And that's just spectacular information for scientists to be able to see the abundance of species that we have here, some of their distribution with those multiple observations of different areas that they grow within these parks. Um, we've collected a lot of really great data with this project. So thank you guys so much for that. Um, again, our top observer, KM Slauson, doing some incredible work. And then um, with, you know, we ended up with a total of 453 observations and 202 species for the park. Absolutely spectacular. You can see that the majority of our observations are research grade. So thank you for that. Great work. We still have some that needs, um, you know, confirmed IDs so that way they can be research grade observations. And then as is with the whole project, our top species are, well, were plants, 130 different species of plants. That's spectacular, that is incredible. And then, you know, breakdown, we had 24 different species of fungi, we had one species of protozoan, four different mammals, six different bird species, six different amphibian species, two different species of ray finned fish, three different arachnid species, 21 different species of insects, and four different species of mollusks. That's just awesome. What a great way to capture our biodiversity. And, um, you know, a lot of the things that aren't plants are really hard to observe to be able to get a picture of some of those things. So good on you guys for, for either finding pieces of them that were trackable, like tracks, scat, or, or other markings that they left, or being able to photograph these things. And that's some of what we'll talk about with our creature feature today. We have some excellent photographs. And then tons of identifications. It's just spectacular. Um, and thank you guys all so much who joined us. Let's talk Humboldt Redwoods, the other park. Yes, yes, let's talk winners. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see guys, we did really well. We have our most observations by bear tracker, most species again by bear tracker, and then the most observed species we have, you know, you can guess it, the coast redwood with 22, then second place, tan oak, similar to Prairie Creek with 15, then thimbleberry, oh, I love me some thimbleberries, with 14, the evergreen huckleberry with 13, I just went and picked some yesterday too, and then California Bay with 13, and then the western sword fern with 12. We've had some awesome species here, and let's see, we have 757, did that go up? I think it went up since I last checked it, wow. 757 total observations and then 272 species total, 91 identifiers and 22 observers. The, uh, wow, there we go, there are our stats. So as you can see guys, we actually need a good bit of help with the needing ID. It's almost like, Kyle, can you zoom in? 46.3, so a little less than half of our observations still need ID. And there's still some time, so if you guys can get out your phones and help us with that, that'd be great. 
53% have been ID'd. Let's go through the species breakdown. 68.4% for plants, 184, wow. Uh, then we had mollusks, three species. And then we had insects with 50 species, wow. Those are easy to get, good job guys. Arachnids with six species, ooh, I like, I actually like spiders. Amphibians with three species. Reptiles, two species. Birds, seven different kinds of species. Mammals, six species, aw. Fungi, seven species. That's cool because it's a little dry over there. So I'm glad you guys got to see some good funguses. And then identifications at 1,236. Wow, we have a good breakdown. We have a lot, like a good breakdown of leading, supporting, and improving. And it seems like we have a, what's Maverick? I um, honestly don't know. I should have done a little bit more research into what yeah. Maverick. Hey, if anyone wants to comment what Maverick is, that'd be cool. <laughs> I know that this is basically um, your, your tiers of what observations did when a new observation was suggested. So um, a leading observation is like the first observation that was made. That's the leading one. Right. A supporting observation is one that's made in agreement. A improving observation is one that's made a more specific species. So maybe Maverick is like disagreeing entirely, saying like this is a completely oh, different species. Oh, okay. Huh? You know what? That could be it. I, I like that. Well, thanks for the breakdown too, because that helped me, and I'm sure everyone else understand it a little bit more. So if you, um, I just want to say that I didn't have too much time to go out there and IDing. Uh, there was like a lot of people tabling, and then a lot of people at Humble Redwood State Park were evacuated because of the fire that's nearby. So I didn't really have my opportunity, but I was out there IDing. I really tried my best. So thank you for like all the identifiers. I think it's a little over uh, double again of the people that were making observations. So shout out to you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for that. Um, let's get into our creature features, shall we? So um, yeah. all three of our creature features today come from the same user. This is Sullivan Ribbit. Sullivan Ribbit um, contributed a huge number of observations that all came in today. They were taken over the course of multiple days between both Humboldt Redwoods and Prairie Creek. Um, and it looks like these were photos that were taken with an actual camera because all of them are really good quality, not just with a phone camera. And um, so we're gonna go over three of his observations. All of them are just beautiful photographs. Uh, a diversity of organisms that we see within the parks and just wanted to highlight um, kind of this user and just their, their work is pretty incredible. A total, by the way, just now seeing this, this individual has a total on their individual account of 7,331 observations. So this person does a lot of work on iNaturalist and, um, you. you know, really excited that contributed to our projects and some of these observations are spectacular. And, and is that like a little toad on his, on the top of his head, Kyle? Yeah, let's see if we can pull up this picture. I think it is. Yes. Oh man. What a great picture. You not only have a really awesome eye for observations, but this guy can take pictures, I can tell you that. So let's dive into seeing some so of let's those. dive into it. Um, what I've got for our Prairie Creek creature feature of today is the coastal giant salamander. I know that I already featured this organism um, a couple days ago. The salamanders are fairly abundant in Prairie Creek. It stays fairly moist there throughout the year and they like that moisture, that's where they live. And what I think is really incredible and really cool about this species, again, is that they are aquatic and terrestrial. They can live in both um, underwater environments and on the land. And that these species of salamander in Prairie Creek are not only found on the ground, but are found in the canopy of the trees. They live up in the tops of the trees and some individuals will spend their entire life in the canopy of the tree without ever coming down. And that can happen for generations and generations because they have all of the things that they would need to live up there. It's an entirely different ecosystem, which just is another support for this biodiversity that, that there's a whole other ecosystem in the canopy of the trees. That's, that's just mind boggling to me. Wow. Let's go ahead and check out these beautiful pictures. This is oh just an excellent photo of a salamander. Obviously this is in its aquatic, you know, habitat, this one's underwater. And this is the coastal giant salamander. Good and picture. Idea. All right, okay, you wanna tell us about Humboldt Redwoods? Yes, and the same person, Sullivan Rabbit, actually found a garter snake 
here at Humble Redwood State Park. And there, it, there's actually some uh, debate on to what exactly this snake is. But look, but yeah, let's actually go to the like, they think it's a California red sided garter snake, or at least that's what um, our observer thinks. And then we have another observer that thinks it's the Western terrestrial garter snake. So if you actually know any, uh, have any expertise on this or think that you may know uh, what this uh, little picture set or what this plant, uh, sorry, I'm all over the place. Uh, what this snake looks like, uh, make sure you get uh, a comment, get involved in the discussion and let these people figure out what this snake is. But let's go back to the picture. Look at that. He's so, like, it is so photogenic. And this is over by the river at the Eel River. I'm not really sure. I think it's over by Meyer's Flat, so it could be a garden club. <gasps> but look at that. It's coming out. Oh, it's looking. Oh, oh so cute. And just so you guys know, you know, people think snakes and they're like, ah, oh, run. But these are actually very uh, harmless and uh, they they're constrictors, so these are little small guys. They won't do that much harm. They're probably more scared of you than you are of them. So if you see one of these, make sure that you don't, that your first instinct isn't to hurt them or, you know, to try to kill them. Oh, these are such great pictures. I love it. So if you know what you think the snake could be, help the discussion out. Really great picture, Solomon Rabbit. Yes, excellent pictures from Sullivan Rabbit. Um, so, shall we move on to our very last creature feature? Yes, I'm gonna do the drum roll. So, again, our creature feature comes from Sullivan Rabbit with his magnificent photographs. And what I wanted to showcase here is not one organism, but a series of organisms. Um, so ba -ba -ba. what Sullivan Rabbit did was basically sat in front of a flower and took photos of all the different things that came there. And what I think this really gives us a good idea of just how much biodiversity can be found in a tiny place. So this diamond spot tail, if you recall, was one of the top species um, on our list. And it, it was seen fairly regularly. This is a type of hoverfly, I believe, which look really similar to bees. They are pollinators, but they are types of flies. And did you know that not just bees or butterflies are pollinators, but there's a whole ton of things that pollinate, including beetles, tiny insects like ants, um, bats, flies, all of these things that land on plants can be pollinators and play a really important role. So I just think it's really incredible. All of these things that he saw just from sitting at one single flower and wow. um, taking all these photos. So I opened up just a few of these so we can check them out. Um, a couple of the different organisms. So here's the diamond spot tail. Did a great oh, photo. I mean, look how tiny that is. Look at those beautiful, elegant wings. Wow. And you guys know insects are not the best to picture. So no, this is not easy. Bees. This is awesome. Not easy to get these photos, but just awesome. The the you know the variety of life that he saw just from sitting at one single flower, and having the eye to be able to tell too that these tiny insects have enough variety to know that they're, um, you know, different species. It's pretty yeah. incredible. So, I mean, what an eye, what a series of photos. I mean, this is nine different observations taken off of one single flower. Wow. And I think that this, this is the same flower. Yeah, it is. It is the same flower in each it photo. So it really just to, speaks volumes. I mean, this one flower supported nine different pollinators coming and um, collecting pollen and then moving out into the world to pollinate other things. They're also feeding while they're in the flower. They're usually drinking the nectar is what, you know, draws them in the first place. So this flower is supporting all of these things. And imagine, um, you know, this, this, this importance of biodiversity here that, um, you know, if this one flower, this species went extinct, all of these things would have to find another flower to eat from. And so it's really important that you have a diversity of different organisms and different flowers because these things have evolved together over the course of thousands and thousands of years. And some things are adapted to only be connected to one thing. And even at this small scale where we're looking at flies and flowers, that if one species were to go extinct, it can cause kind of a domino effect with impacting a lot of other things. And um, we might not always be aware of that. We might not have always done the research to find out how all of these things are interconnected. 
especially when we're looking at tiny, tiny flies on a flower. Yeah. So um, I think we are gonna wrap up, but again, just wanna say like, it's, this, it's incredible the amount that we were able to collect from this one single project. We are so just inspired by the work that you guys have done um, being out in the parks, how engaged with this you've been. Um, it's been a blast to talk to you, a few of you in the park who've been participating in this um, and just getting to see people out in the park, enjoying learning about things. Um, identifying species and that all of this is helpful to scientists. It's tons of fun. It's a blast, but all of this is, is really helpful and important information. So really thank you guys so much for participating and, and, and joining us. Yeah, totally. Uh, humble Redwood State Park participants. Thank you all. I know that our park has been hit a little bit worse with wildfires and it wasn't easy for you guys to get out there yet. Everyone did it. You guys helped identify. And I'm just so proud that we did well and we still, you know, kind of won. There's still a little bit of time, but pretty much won in, in the circumstances that we had. So I know that this might be something we may do in the future. So this is just, if you didn't participate next time, just polish off your skills. You could probably participate next time or just look for projects in your area that are already happening um, and you can get involved in those too. But you can always be a citizen scientist anywhere, anytime. And you don't have to wait for somebody to organize something. If you're just into it, you can just go out there and do it. Anytime. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys all so much for joining us again. We've had a blast with Biodiversity Week. Um, be sure to tune in again tomorrow at 3 o'clock. We will be officially closing out the competition. Um, it will be either Griff or Marnin. We're not 100% sure, but somebody will be joining you and talk to you all about this great stuff and finally closing out this wonderful competition. We look forward to doing more stuff like this with you guys in the future. And as always, keep an eye out on our Facebook page for our three o'clock live streams every day or all kinds of other great content even after Biodiversity Day. So thank you guys all so much. It's been a blast and we will be seeing you again. Feel free to comment if you have any questions or want to talk any more about these species, check out these projects. We'll be posting the links for those as well in the description. So check it all out. The competition's not officially over, but great job, Humboldt Redwoods. Well done. Tons of observations. <laughs> It's been a blast, everybody. Awesome. Yeah, thank you, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. -bye.